Uh, yeah, hi guys, this is Tony. Okay, uh, anyway, uh, th today we're back in the Makwaland, uh, South Africa. I got the map up there real nice, show you where we're at. Okay, basically Northern Cape, somewhat near the Namibian border, a little bit south there. But first off, uh, Al's nephew is in a little bit of trouble. So, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to run these ads first. And uh, I told him I'd let him do this for his nephew nice. Okay, so anyway, here we go. Here's uh, here's Al's coach. Go fuck yourself, bye. Hey, Tone, uh, we're real worried about my nephew. Uh, you know, he's been hanging out with those goths at the mall like I've been telling you about. But, uh, you know, that's fine. But, you know, I just got off the phone with my sister, you know, his mom. And she's, she's telling me that he's been going on these chat rooms online. And there's all kind of weird stuff on there. He's talking to all kinds of weird people on there about all kinds of stuff. So we're trying to drum up some cash and get him into some kind of after-school program or counseling or something, maybe summer camp or something. So uh, thanks for letting me shill these ads on your channel. Uh, give the gift of better coffee this holiday season with Trade Coffee. They, thanks, Trade Coffee, for sponsoring this video. Discover new roasters matching you to your coffee. Take the quiz. They deliver it to your door, and then you rate your coffee. Uh, the, the good things they want me to tell you about their service is they not, you won't run out of coffee. It comes to your door, and it's super fresh. They sent us some coffee over by here, and and it was from Peugeot in Arizona. It's like a family roastery. I kind of felt like I was up in Door County up there at some little gift shop. You know, I got some kind of, you know, local thing, like the local gift or something like that. Uh, it is a great gift idea. A personalized coffee subscription is a good gift, for, I guess, for somebody in your life who likes coffee. If you don't like the first bag, they'll send you another bag. Okay, so if you use this link that they forced upon us, uh, the view these you know the viewers of this video they'll get fifteen dollars off the first three bags, and so that's like your first bags free. And then uh, you take the quiz by clicking the link they forced upon us. There's free shipping and give the gift of better coffee. Okay, thanks, Tone. Bye. Holy shit, that's a large. Look at that guy. That's kind of terrifying. I bet that guy would send your ass into some sort of a, some sort of a toxic shack. Isn't that the name of a shitty grindcore band? What you got in that stinger there, guy? Do you like your juicy pinchers? Now don't get mad. You don't gotta be mad like that. Oh, he's a four incher. I, I gotta put this rock down. You can't go right there. Don't wanna go back under the rock. Go under that rock. You'll be safe there. You know, they abuse you for the pet shop trade here in the States. You could be in some nerd's aquarium. You like your juicy pinchers? He's just hiding there. We'll put the little rock back for him right over there. Look at this guy. Another wonderful iris. A species in the genus Ferraria. God damn. Look at all the fuzz on the back of those anthers. Ferraria variabilis, 18 species in this genus. Look at that orange pollen. Woo. Most of those species are from out of winter rainfall areas, save for a handful. Banger genus iris right here. Ooh, hairy anthers. Looking through my perianth. And of course, the sword-shaped unifacial leaves. God, what a banger, about four inches, maybe, maybe six inches tall. Just coming up in the sand. These flowers are supposed to smell like hell, but honestly, I, I haven't gotten up in there to smell it. Smell like hell to be pollinated by flies. Little, uh, little bit of fringe on those petals, too. Look, you got a, you got a bunch of nectar down there. Ferraria variabilis. Beautiful, uh, patterning on that uh, perianth. See, that sort of little fly goes down in there to get the nectar because it smells bad and just crawling out, he just gets a little dust in a pond on his back. How about that? How's that for a pollination syndrome? Okay, speaking of bangers, all right, this whole family, Melianthaceae, is full of them, especially this genus, Melianthus. The caterpillars, are, look at this giant caterpillar. He's having a nice time, huh? 
it's a that's a juicy one you got this pin ate the foliage there's another one I'm cut oh and it stinks the foliage stinks it smells terrible even more interesting all right this these red things up here do not appear to be the actual flower the actual flower is right there that's where the nectar source is see that you see the four stamens poking out right there four stamens and the style you see that so those are the petals right there those little shriveled black things and at the top of this inflorescence those red things are the attractant they're just sterile flowers they're just the uh, sexually uh, sterile flowers acting as attractants there's those petals again all shriveled at the base like i got pollen all over my damn fingers here you got those four stamens in two different pairs okay what a great species melianthus pectinatus order here is geraniales oh which would explain why the the vegetative parts smell so bad oh definitely i definitely doesn't make me want to gnaw on those leaves covered in the glands that smell like hell see this thing this is just acting like the attractant like a little flag those red bracts up top you see any sexy parts up there no See, so you get the green sepals curved back. Green sepals, petals are shriveled in there. Nice for the bird pollination, nice. Look how diminutive this is compared to some of the other species. Look at the bracts. Look at the glands. These things are so glandular. All the species in this genus, that pinnate foliage, the new foliage, the fresh foliage, having those uh, red pigments in there, to minimize UV damage, all right, like plant melanin. Get your osteospermum coming up in, in between. See those osteospermum uh, akines right there? Now here's something interesting, and you wouldn't know how cool this plant is if you didn't, uh, if you didn't already know about what it's doing here. Now it looks like these uh, leaves have been gnawed off, all right? So you can see it's a member of the iris family. It's already done flowering. Okay, get your little ovules developing right there. But it looks like this plant's already been gnawed off, but that's actually not the case. Nothing is gnawed on this plant. This plant just produces leaves like that. Okay, here's another one here. See that? Now, there, there's no tracks of any kind around here. There's nothing to indicate that anything is chewed on this. This is just this plant's way of escaping herbivory. Okay, producing leaves that look like someone already got here first. Like someone already got to the buffet first, and therefore there's not much left to non. Pretty uh, ingenious, uh, you know, running the risk of anthropomorphizing here, pretty ingenious evolutionary trick. Okay, hold on. We got to talk about this genus Bobbiana, genus of uh, generally desert dryland irises, okay? And so because they come from a dry environment, it's going to be more selection pressure on them. Uh, to uh, you know, for herbivory, so they're gonna have to find ways to get around it. There's actually three or four species that do this leaf uh, herbivory mimicry thing. Okay, basically mimicking uh, like they've already been chewed on. All right, so this was an adaptive trait. Who knows when it popped up? How many millions of years ago? But it obviously serves a purpose of uh, help helping these these guys escape herbivory. Okay, no formal research papers on it yet. Would love to see one. Maybe someone will do one in the future with a control group and whatnot. But I just want you to know these guys are out there. Anyway, genus Bobbiana, 18 species in the genus. And again, three or four of them do this truncate leave the knot on thing. Oh, this whole time I thought those were termite mounds. They're ant mounds. And they're rather large ants. They look pretty mean, too. The yellow-haired sugar ant, pretty common in these dry environments. They got a special venom gland that produces formic acid. So they can squirt acid against the attackers. Look at that. Fuck. It'd be a shame to wake up after a, to wake up and realize you've been sleeping on one of those or sleeping next to one. Look, they're aggressive little bastards too. Look at it. Look, see, you stomp right there. They all come at you. Aggression is a means of defense. Another diminutive little banger. Member of the family culture, Casey, right here. Ornithoglossum vulgari nice. What is going on? What is going on with those guys? Look at that. Got your six stamens. Looks like uh, three style lobes poking out. Filaments are uh, white and red. 
order of course is Lily Alley's on this guy. Another beautiful little geophyte. www.floralbangers.com Yeah, this thing's a banger. Look at that. Look at those those reflex steeples. Look at it. Curved up. What pollinates this? There's the fruit right there. Maturing fruit. Got a toxic bulb in the ground right there. You don't want to be putting that in your mouth. Again, those three style branches, six stamens, six tepals were flexed up. Here's the distribution on that thing. Look at that. God damn, the scrofs here are so weird. Family of scrofulariaceae. Look at this guy. That thing's, that's a beaut. Ah, everything from the foliage to the flowers. Purple zygomorphic little monkey flowers. Ooh, very spiny. Ooh. God damn, look. Flowering at the base too. You can tell there's been uh, you can tell there's been some very intense selection pressure uh, from herbivory here. From from NARS. Most of those animals uh, seem to be gone now from this area, from this region. But you could tell, I mean, why else would something be so spiny? The flowering at the base, too, you know, I don't know. Maybe to avoid getting the flowers gnawed off. Of course, you know, nothing's directed. It's just the, the result of uh, baby steps and selection pressure and uh, massive amounts of uh, evolutionary time, but still. Quite impressive. A lot of high rack shit up here. A lot of high rack shit. Look at that. All up in the cracks. How do they get it in the cracks and shit? Like, they're just walking. They're just shitting while they walk. How do they do that? Look at what we got in the way of uh, Euphorbia AC. Look at that. Ah! Those flowers, of course, just glistening with nectar. Excuse me, those inflorescences. Because remember, again, each one of those... Look at a little spider crown. Each one of those is not a flower. It's an inflorescence. It's a compound flower. Ovary's already been pollinated. What do we got in the way of leaves? Just vestigial leaves. Tiny little leaves. Most of the photosynthesis, of course, going on in the stem. And speaking of stems, look at that extremely toxic latex oozing out of that wound just above the leaf axle on this uh, Euphorbia dragiana. Right? Bangers of Namaqualand.com. Euphorbia dragiana. There you go. Oh, here we go. This is a banger. Okay, mint family Lamiaceae. Looks like a stackies. Stachys flavescent. See those are zygomorphic, bilaterally symmetrical yellow flowers. The opposite leaves. The verticillaster inflorescence. All the flowers whirled around that stem right there. See that? Look at the texture on the abaxial surface of those leaves too. Oh, it smells good too. Stachys flavescence. You know, from that same family, there's that salvia dentata. Look at that. Beautiful blue flowers. Over here, we got a... Uh, the most infamous uh, genus in the Anacardiaceae, the poison oak family. This is the genus Searsia. Okay, got to be five dozen species in this genus. Look at those triffid leaves. Look at this guy over here, photosynthesizing with barely any leaves. Just photosynthetic stems. Ermstadia glauca. All right. Oh, look at that. See those pink pigments, those beta lane pigments? Give away for the order Caryophyllales, namesake of the beta lane pigments. All right. Look at that. Just a little uh, farina on that stem right there. Okay, little waxy farina doing its job photosynthesizing with barely any leaves here in the Maquiland. Oh, well, what do we got here? One of the uh, isoaceous bastards, one of the mesems, one of the mesems. All right, looks like a genus Drosanthemum. Those, of course, are not petals. They're petaloid, petaloid staminodes. Look at all the dozens of stamens in there. You got a five-branch style in there. Is that what's going on? Look at the uh, bladder cells on that epidermal tissue. Nice. Look at that. All right, all right. Keynote of uh, quite a few genera in Isoaceae, but especially the genus Drosanthemum. Don't know what species of Drosanthemum this is, but you can just see. Again, you get those uh, uh, alternating pairs of opposite leaves. Then right here, we got another Mesum, Chiridopsis denticulata. Look at that blue foliage on that guy. Look at this. Let's step over here. Look at this. Look at this. Got a flower on here. Okay, very thin yellow petaloid staminodes there's the fruit right there that little capsule of course these things split open when you get get them wet get some water on them and they uh drop their seeds look at that flower though banger right there dozens of stamens okay huge nectar source and again not petals but petaloid staminodes chiridopsis is a large genus look into that flower right there oh what a banger look at it look at all the pollen 
Look at what's going on. You got guys crawling out of there and what the shit. What a great family, Isoacea. Again, colloquial, colloquially known as the Mesems. The Mesems. Okay, and speaking of Isoacea, the most species-rich family in a whole damn cape. Here's Leopoldia schultzii, little woody shrub, petaloid staminodes, almost forming like a little cage with some of the stamens to enclose the pollinators up there at the top, like a little tube, a little steeple. But again, this whole family is so massively important for the ecology of this place. Huge nectar source. Oh, they're not flowering anymore, but when they are flowering, they smell kind of yeasty because they're pollinated by gerbils and other varmints, okay? A.K.A. the hedgehog lily. This is a Masonia depressa. Hyacinthaceae, also known as now the Celoidea subfamily, the Asparagales. Okay, another uh, wonderful little geophyte genus there, Masonia. Look at this. Who doesn't love a Tylocodon? Okay, this is Tylocodon paniculatus. You're referring to the inflorescence type. Look at this trunk right there. Look at that. Look like a little elephant tree, like the genus Bursera from the Neotropics. And there you go. See, there's that trunk again with the peel and bark. Succulent trunk, okay? Kind of like a little uh, dwarfed tree. All right. This genus has about 50, 60 species in it. Look at those leaves, all right? Crassulaceae is the family here. Prominent family of succulents in a cape. There's those flowers about to go off. They're summer bloomers mostly. Okay, but this, uh, all the species in this genus, they can be anything from single leaf geophytes, little diminutive bastards, to big guys like this, okay? These kind of mini trees with these succulent pachycorm trunks. Look at that. Just growing right out. Right at home on a metamorphous granite. There's that inflorescence again. The panicle. Ah. Oh, last year's calices. Right there, all dried and crispy. Look at that. Just, just thriving here. All right. Despite the lack of soil. Oh, look at a little. Look at the uh, Arctic titties. There we go. And more Gorteria diffusa right there. Look at that. Yeah, the beetle daisies. Actually, the, the those ligule patterns are mimicking cape bee flies. There's those phyleries. All hairy and stiff and bristly and whatnot. Next to the Arctotus. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is nice. Genus here is Lacertia from the same tribe as Astragalus of the P family, Fabaceae. Okay, this looks like Lacertia capitata. Look at that pinnae foliage covered in strigos hairs. The ovaries here look nice. Okay, these fruits look real nice. Look with the wrinkly, look at it, with the little red wrinkles and with the shit on them. Got those uh, leftover, uh, those leftover stamens just acting like little hairs at the uh, base of those uh, ovaries. Nice. With more blue composites. Look at the phyleries on there. You see that? Spiky, hairy phyleries. Whole thing, whole plant covered in those stiff little hairs. Look at that blue on the ligules, on the abaxial surfaces. You know, I guess I just never realized that. It's because these flowers haven't opened up yet. That's why. But it's just a... Looks like a Gorteria. See, there's the little... There's the quote-unquote beetles. You know, to dupe the pollinators to getting in there. No, no fragrance to this guy, surprisingly. So many of the composites out here stink. Look at the phyleries. Look at it. One of the only uh, genera of uh, Brassicaceae. In South Africa, Heliophila. Look at that. See that? Sepals interspersed with the, the petals. See those uh, orange sepals back there? They're more like a yellow, I guess. Got those glucosinolates in there. Look at his little buds down there. Waxy. He's got a waxy feel to him. Linear leaves almost non-existent. I imagine the stem's doing most of the photosynthesis right there. Yeah, you can see it. It's Nebraska. Look at those buds. Looking like a strep. Looking like a streptanthus or a colanthus. Six stamens. Ooh. A lot of species in that genus, too. Ah, uh, nice. One of the more common pelargoniums. Okay, family, uh, geranium family, geraniaceae. Look at those leaves down there. All right, pelargonium chrythmifolium. Chrythmifolium. All right, well, it looks like that's all I got for you this afternoon. Okay. Look at that massive bastard over there. Look at that. Massive Tyler Cotton. Alright, have a good rest of the evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye.